Let's talk review warnings. These are important to maintain a healthy model. In this video, I give you practical tips to help you resolve these for any project. That's coming up straight after this. Welcome to Power Surge, where I show you everything that I know about Revit. If you are visiting today, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any future content. Sometimes the show button within the warnings dialog doesn't show much. This can cause the user to give up. Well, in this video, I will show you six tips to help you resolve review warnings. Let's check it out. Tip one uses a Dynamo script. Install the bank package from John Pearson, the creator of the package. He has created some notes to help highlight the review warnings in Revit. Let's have a look at how this works. The script collects all warnings in the document. It gives them an overriding color and selects these elements in Revit. To demonstrate, I will select highlighted floors. With the run complete, the script reveals two warnings caused by four floors. On screen, you can see the highlighted floors in orange. The filter also shows two selected elements, but we can only see one. This brings us to tip two. Use the isolate tool to only view the conflicting elements. The isolate, however, shows four orange floors, but the filter only selected two elements. Let's understand this a little bit more. While also noting tip three, which is the show related warnings button. This will show all warnings related to a specific Revit element. The warnings dialog reveals two clashes. These are the warnings involving three different IDs, three different floors if you like. One of these floors is shown twice, making a total of four. This is what the Dynamo script had already shown us. Now that we understand where the conflicts occur, it is simple to resolve. Adjust the view to suit, then click edit and use the align tools to correct the sketch lines. With the overlaps removed, clicking the element no longer reveals a warning. Remember these were displayed on the ribbon in the highlighted zone. Let's take a moment to recap what has been covered thus far. Tip 1 was to use Dynamo with the bang package. Tip 2 was to isolate elements. Tip 3 was to use the show related warnings button. To repeat the process, we can relaunch Dynamo and select another warning. Let's revisit the warning from the start of the tutorial the actual run width. With the run completed, I can see one element selected. Unlike before, where four instances caused two warnings, here one warning is related to just one instance. The script has also revealed a little information about the error. This will be unpacked a little more soon. But nothing is highlighted. The filter shows something is definitely selected. So we try the next tip, which was to isolate, but that is grayed out. So we check the next tip, which was show related warnings to gather more information. This reveals that although the warning is about stairs, the category with the issue is runs, and this cannot be isolated. To help unpack this a little more, let's switch to a plan view, which prompts tip four which is to use multiple views. As I drag the cursor over the stair and click, no warnings are revealed. However, if I tab to select the runs category, the show related warnings appears. The warning notes that the run is less than the allowed minimum. If I check the type properties and find minimum run width, I can see a value of 914.4. So the modeled run width 
has to be higher than this number. And Revit is saying that is not the case. Let's check if this is true. Click to edit the stair and notice the run is highlighted as orange. So the Dynamo script did actually work. Also, notice the width of the run is 689, which is less than the specified 914. So now we have two options, increase the run width or change the minimum value. In this case, the stair is already modeled in context. So we should change the value instead. However, please note this is the type value and not instance. If you have multiple instances of this type model, and you only want to change this particular instance, it is better to duplicate this type and then edit the value. Now that the value has been changed to something less than what has been modeled, the warning has been resolved. Let's continue to resolve some more warnings and learn some more tips along the way. Back to the Dynamo script, we can select highlighted walls overlap. This time, I will change the highlighted color to red. With the run complete, the model shows some red highlights and the filter has two walls selected. Let's work through the tips we've already learned to uncover some more information. After running the script, the next tip was to use the isolate, in this case by category. This reveals a lot more red highlights. To understand more, proceed to the next tip, which was show related warnings. The warnings dialog reveals four warnings related to this particular wall. So there is one ID repeated four times. It will be helpful to use multiple views to understand the warning. Here I choose the attic floor plan and then I type WT to tile the windows. Let's zoom in to have a closer look. The overlaps are now visible on screen. Use the Align tool to correct these. Then click each segment to see if the warnings have been resolved. Here we can see that there is still an issue. Show related warnings tells us how to fix the problem. This is tip 5, read warnings carefully. The warning states that I should use cut geometry to embed the overlapping walls together. Let me show you what that means. But first I will organize the views accordingly. Remember this was tip 4 which was to use multiple views. So this is the pantry and this has been modeled as a wall. This is an Autodesk sample file by the way. And again, the warning states that I should use the cut geometry tool to embed this into the counter, which is the overlapping wall in this case. Select the conflicting element, then from the modified tab on the ribbon, find the geometry panel and pick the cut tool. Then pick one of the walls to embed it into the other. This has now resolved the warning. Now let's switch to a different project which better illustrates the next tip. Tip 6 is to use scope and section boxes to crop the model. This makes it easier to find warnings and fix them. In this view we are searching for overlapping flaws. Let's work through the tips in order. We have run the script. Next we isolate the flaws. We can search for the ID of the conflicting flaws. And we can zoom in to see that the element has been selected. But there is another level of flaws on top. It would help if we crop the model. And we can do this using a scope box. Using the view cube. We can go to an elevation view and adjust the scope box so that it only encloses the lower level floors. Then go back to the isometric view. Then in the properties palette, apply the scope box value to the scope box parameter. Now, only the lower level floors are visible and the warning is easier to resolve. Let's grab that idea again to ensure that we are editing the correct floor. 
Remember, the ID can be gathered from the Dynamo script or the warnings dialog box. With the correct flaw now confirmed, we can commence resolving the warnings. On screen, we can see that the floors are sitting on top of each other. This is because the highlighted floor has not been raised to a suitable height off the host level. In the type properties, I can see that the highlighted floor is actually an epoxy finish and has a thickness of five millimeters. So now that I have understood the problem, the solution would be to offset the highlighted floor by its thickness, which in this case is five millimeters. But this has actually caused an additional warning. The correct floor now overlaps with a different floor. This is simple to fix though. We can edit the floor boundaries to suit. Click the edit boundary button on the toolbar and use the align tools to edit the boundaries accordingly. That's the end of the video. I hope that you've learned something new and that you found that interesting. If you did, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any future content. And I will see you in the next video.